print bill proposing a ban on TikTok just sailed through the US House of Representatives with a whopping 352 votes in favor and a measly tiny 65 votes against. TikTok would now either be sold to another group in the US or it would be banned by September. This is not an attempt to ban TikTok. It's an attempt to make TikTok better. Apparently, if you don't vote for this bill, big bad China is gonna eat America alive. China is gonna get access to the data of about 170 million American TikTok users, which they will obviously, because it's China, use it to do terrible, terrible things. Social media was making the kids pro-Hamas and anti-Israel and now they're all anti-Semites. That's Joe Biden for you. Willing to sacrifice his presidency, his party, his voters, maybe just his own country, maybe even his own country, just so he can keep Israel happy. The US Congress famously can't agree on anything, I mean, whether it's healthcare, student loans, money for Ukraine's endless war, or even keeping their own government running. And that's because the red and blue tribal factions that compete for control of sub-Canadian America, that's what I like to call the USA, just hate each other's guts. And so, it came as a surprise to some people when a bring bill proposing a ban on TikTok just sailed through the US House of Representatives with a whopping 352 votes in favor and a measly tiny 65 votes against. TikTok would now either be sold to another group in the US or it would be banned by September. But why? First of all, this is not a ban on TikTok. I'm a grandmother of teenagers. I understand the entertainment value, the educational value, the communication value, the business value for some business on this. This is not an attempt to ban TikTok. It's an attempt to make TikTok better. Tic-tac-toe, a winner. Okay, yeah, so that was Nancy Pelosi back from auditioning for the lead role in the next Mummy movie. But she's not the only one left or right, red or blue, MAGA or Bidenites. Just about everyone's on board with this because apparently if you don't vote for this bill, big bad China is going to eat America alive. Joe Biden himself also said that he, I approve of this bill and I will sign it if it gets to the White House. Now, in one sense, this is just part of the ongoing China scare that's been consuming America's security and political establishment for some time. And in many ways, that's just the modern version of the Red Scare of the 50s and the Japanese economic takeover scare of the 80s. Now, this most recent scare, and the thing is that America likes a good scare. They've got to have an enemy. They can't work otherwise. This recent scare, the most recent scare, dates back at least to... Obama's Asian pivot and more recently of course we've seen the building up of anti-China alliances to try and contain Beijing, shenanigans in the South China Sea, Biden's pledge to defend Taiwan against China and on the economic and tech front making it illegal for China to buy high-tech chips and also placing sanctions against Huawei which were meant to stop the company's rise. Now spoiler alert they didn't work and after a brief brief dip Huawei is back on track and China's making its own chips now. So, yeah. Now, as for TikTok, the main concerns congressmen and women have expressed are that one, China's gonna get access to the data of about 170 million American TikTok users, which they will obviously, because it's China, use it to do terrible, terrible things. And number two, that since TikTok is, according to the supporters of the bill, owned by the Communist Party of China, they can tweak the almighty algorithm and show users what they want users to see. Now, as for the first point, the fact is that the data of American users is, like everything in America, up for sale anyway and has been for a while. I mean, just take a look at this. So yeah, it's not about the data. Um, as for who owns TikTok, hell, it's not the CCP. TikTok is owned by ByteDance and 60% of ByteDance is owned by global investors, including US-based investors, and 20% by its Chinese co-founders and about 20% by its employees, which also include thousands of employees in the US. So what's the real reason? Well, you see, right after October 7th, as Israel launched its genocidal campaign against Gaza and the entire Palestinian people, posters in America noticed that young people in particular were turning away from Israel. 
they were marching in the streets, they were making a noise, and they just weren't swallowing Zionist propaganda whole like their parents and grandparents mostly had. And obviously, this has to be because of social media. Social media was making the kids pro-Hamas and anti-Israel, and now they're all anti-Semites because, of course, social media. No, seriously. I mean, just listen to what Jonathan Greenblatt head of the pro-Israel Anti-Defamation League had to say in a leaked audio. But I also want to point out that we have a major, major, major generational problem. All the polling I've seen, ADL's polling, ICC's polling, independent polling, suggests this is not a left-right gap, folks. The issue in the United States' support for Israel is not left and right. It is young and old. And the numbers of young people who think that Hamas's, you know, massacre was justified is shockingly and terrifyingly high. And so we really have a TikTok problem, a Gen Z problem, that our community needs to put the same brains that gave us Tagli, the same brains that gave us all these other amazing innovations, need to put our energy toward this, like, fast. Because again, like we've been chasing this left-right divide, it's the wrong game. The real game is the next generation and the Hamas and their accomplices, the, idi the useful idiots in the West, are falling in line in ways that are terrifying. Last I'll just say, we saw a dramatic change in the language of the activists here in America on October the 8th. The language of groups that we've long tracked have long been problematic, like Students for Justice in Palestine and Jewish Voices for Peace. They flipped like this and went to like Iranian propaganda. The language I could show you from their toolkits, because our analysts are in their groups. We saw this again on October the 8th. It was that fast. Like the language in their toolkits was all about the Zionist entity and lots of other language that we recognized from Iranian propaganda. We think there's something more to this that's below the waterline. It's the young generation we need to be focusing energy on. This, there's something happening with Iran and how it's now their propaganda and their language and their tactics seem to be bleeding into the American kind of activist space in ways that are very different than NIAC and very, very problematic. But of course, it's not just about TikTok, where we saw that pro-Palestinian content far outnumbered pro-Israeli content because we saw the same on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram. And maybe, just maybe, that was because the kids don't like genocide. The kids don't like seeing other kids being killed and starved and bombed and murdered in their thousands. And maybe the kids don't like seeing the brave soldiers of the Israeli army happily blowing up buildings, looting Palestinian homes, and for God's sakes, posing with the lingerie of Palestinian women that they have killed, displaced, and made homeless. And maybe it's because the kids actually have a heart. Maybe. But now it's got to be TikTok. So when we saw that uh, the bill came, so when the bill came up, a major pro-Israeli Jewish lobby, the Jewish Federations of North America, put their weight behind it, saying the single most important issue to our Jewish communities today is the dramatic rise in anti-Semitism. This is what JFNA wrote in an official letter to Congress. Our community understands that social media is a major driver of the drive in anti-Semitism and that TikTok is the worst offender by far. And when we just happened to take a look at who wrote the bill, that's Congressman Mike Gallagher and we also find, guess what, that in the last election cycle, his biggest campaign donor was APAC. Yeah, that's right, APAC. APAC gave him $44,300 and APAC is, of course, the preeminent Israeli lobby group in the US of A. I am shocking, I know. And see, here's, here's the best part. Just check out this tweet by APAC. Another great night uh, for pro israel Democrats. All APAC-endorsed Democrats won their primary election tonight. So far in this cycle, all 40 APAC-endorsed cabinet candidates have won their primary. Being pro israel is good policy and good politics. I mean, 
America has to be the only country where a foreign country can actually brag about buying politicians and people are like, yeah, that's great. Um, APAC's not going to stop right now, of course, uh, because in 2024, they're really breaking out the checkbooks and they're going to be giving over $100 million to defeat candidates they think aren't sufficiently worshipful of Israel. But as with a lot of what the Israeli lobby is doing these days, it's kind of backfiring, just a little bit, because everyone's talking about APAC now. Former Florida Congresswoman Pam Keith blamed the Israeli lobby group APAC for the large Democrat vote to ban TikTok. Uh, reacting to the news of the vote, Pam Keith, who's an ex-representative of, by the way, of a heavily Jewish congressional district, the 18th congressional district, wrote on Twitter, Wow, I am shocked that Dems are voting to ba ban TikTok. This is APAC at work. And, and, and this blew my mind. MSNBC, MSNBC, that's as mainstream as mainstream media in the US goes. They did a whole six minute piece explaining how APAC works. And if you're as old as I clearly am, you know that this just doesn't happen, but it's happening now and it's blowing my mind, man. And that's not all. This is perhaps like the most important thing here. Uh, over a hundred prominent Jewish Americans have now signed an open letter opposing APAC. These are educators, actors, writers, professors, editors, and they say, and I quote, we recognize that the purpose of APAC's interventions in electoral politics is to defeat any critics of Israeli government policy and to support candidates who vow unwavering loyalty to Israel, thereby ensuring the United States continuing support for all Israel does, regardless of its violence and illegality. Given that Israel is so isolated internationally that it could not continue its inhumane treatment of the Palestinians without US political and military support, APAC is an essential link the chain in the chain that holds in place the unbearable tragedy of Israel-Palestine. In the upcoming US elections, we need to break that chain in order to free the people of Israel and Palestine to pursue peaceful coexistence. That's not all. American TikTok users, a whole, what, 170 million of them, are also turning on Congress members who use TikTok to build a huge following and then voted to ban it. That's people like Jeff Jackson, who has about, what, 20 million followers on TikTok, and he had to post a pretty groveling apology on TikTok, naturally, where else would he post it? I apologize. I did not handle this situation well from top to bottom. And that is why I have been completely roasted on this app over the last 48 hours. And I get it. If I were in your shoes, I would probably feel the same way. I would see someone who used this app to build a following and then appears to have voted against it. And I would be upset. And I would feel like I deserved more of an explanation. For which he got roasted so bad that he had to delete it. Well, that's what you get, Jeff. So yeah, we don't know if the bill is actually going to go through. I think it might, given the absolute control Israel has on US politics. But what we do know is that one man is ready to buy it if it's forced to sell. And that is former US Treasury Secretary Mnuchin, who's putting together an investing investor group to buy TikTok. And here's the best part. Mnuchin is a pro-Trump Republican. And so if the sale happens, you will have one major social media platform owned by an actual Republican, while another yeah, Twitter is already owned by the right-wing man-child Elon Musk in an election year. But that's Joe Biden for you. Willing to sacrifice his presidency, his party, his voters, maybe just his own country, maybe even his own country, just so he can keep Israel happy. And as for TikTok, yeah, it's a matter of national security, but not America's national security, Israel's national security. And if you didn't know that by now, now you know.